Welcome to my dark laundry. The reason why I haven't got the light on is just to show you how much light I have in this area. So we get morning sun through this window here, but for the rest of the day, so probably about until about seven or eight o'clock. And then after that, we don't get any more sun. The whole day is just like this. Even on a sunny day, it's just a fresh and brighter, but most of the time it's dark. Now, if I turn the light on, I've got a whole heap of plants that are soaking in here. And this one now, I've had this soaking for about five days now. These are two Echeveria Sasa Queen and Hyalinus. Hyalinus Choice, actually. So this one is still soft to the touch. So it still needs probably about a day or two of soaking. And that one there, the Sasa Queen, is oh, maybe another couple of hours. And the rest of the gang, this one's here. That one is my Mohican. I can take this because it's quite dark in there. So my Mohican has been soaking for about four days. And I just drain it out at the moment. And so as all these cactus so this one only two days what are you because uh it was the freaky thing hang on the freak cactus okay I'll just put you here and hope i don't drop it so this one was really desiccated so i thought if it's gonna die <laughs> i might as well kill it faster so i soaked it in my seaweed solution and now it has perked up so two days and now it's all good so i probably need to take that out of there and also this one what are you you are graptiveria orange sherbet this has been soaking for about three days so there are some plants that needs longer soaking and there are some plants that need less soaking also my manaudis my achiveria manaudis here has been dried up you can see all the leaves has fallen off it because it was tucked in the corner outside and i couldn't see it so it hasn't been watered for a very long time and therefore all the leaves has dropped off and dried up now but this one as well is not as frost hardy as my other Echeverias. So I have to put this somewhere where it's going to be protected from the frost because it's already autumn here in Australia. And if I leave that outside, that's going to get hit by the frost and die on me. Now, this one here is my variegated string of pearls or Senecio Raulianos. Now, this one was really, really, really dry and Look at that so still all wrinkled up so but the top was even worse before but now it's slowly taking in water so it's just in this pot here this is actually already a propagated one i just put that in there for about 24 hours and i'm still going to leave that soaking until all of this perk up all the little uh, pearls perked up so this is a variegated one and I think I might just leave this inside the soil to grow now that it's coming on to winter it is frost hardy by the way but I want to have a healthy head of variegated string of pearls that hasn't been given a hard time or hasn't been tortured I'm trying to avoid using that word but anyway now this one Pachyveria pachytoides these are all leaf grown okay so this one's not not pretty so these ones are all now truly soaked and hang on i just need to feel okay this is what i'm afraid of i drop it and i drop it on the other plants the hazards of doing videos but anyway if i touch it it's all nice and hard oh that one is probably a little bit say i would say about five percent little softness still so it could do more soaking but that's well and ready anyway to go outside. And my saigo cactus over here is about to flower as well. And this one, and look at that, all also those, what do you call these things? Never mind, I forgot what you're called. Burritos, okay, morganianum. My morganianum are, sedum morganianum, are all dried up as well. Or should I say desiccated? It means it's really, really dry. Now, now this one has all perked up as well but it was really bad a week ago autumn is the time of the month wherein i give my 
succulents on seaweed conditioner. I just guessed in it. <laughs> so sometimes it's a little bit strong and sometimes it's a lot weaker, but it doesn't really matter as long as I give it to them. They're not too fussy. They'll take in whatever. Okay, while waiting for that to fill up, I just noticed my peperomia speckled. Peperomia is now dead because <laughs> <laughs> they do. They, this is actually my second peperomia or speckled peperomia that I've killed and I have now resolved myself to not getting them ever again. So I have actually slowed down a lot on my purchases lately. So the last time I think I bought some plants like sort of seriously one plant here and there not counting shrubby things for the garden is not counted but Succulent wise, I think the last one I bought was a tiny little ripsalis, but anyway. Oh la la, my breakfast for today is some leftover chicken schnitzel, cold, and some macaron. Oh, yum, 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 yum. Do we start with the macaron or we go with <laughs> schnitzel? Schnitzel first. Mmm. Yum, 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 yum. What is your favorite macaron? My favorite would have to be the vanilla and the pistachio. First ones I'm gonna do are this ebony that I've transplanted ready. These are all my seed grown ones. So I need to water them. I've actually watered this yesterday, but we had so much wind yesterday that they dried up really quickly so I need to water them again so these are all planted in coconut coir here and the ones at the top is in my amended master succulent soil mix because I ran out of granite and these ones over here I planted them in each individual pot but look what happened to it because we hardly had any sun we this one's got a lot of moss look at that that is crazy same soil as in those ones there and yet the individual pots has got a lot of moss after being rained on but anyway they're so pretty these ebony and they have actually grown quite fast my lithops are just waking up because they go dormant in summer and look these are all seed grown and hopefully they flower this year and I can have some more but Chiviria gavoides amestiana I really love this plant and if I can buy some more of that plant I will but that's the only one I've got so my lithops here one of the biggest ones so this one's here died and those ones are having babies and the other ones hang on are about to flower and that one there just finished flowering I don't know if it got cross-pollinated but it doesn't matter Laulensis this needs to be watered really really bad because those little tiny baby ones they're gonna die if they're not watered so I have to maintain watering on these ones so I, I'd say I water them a couple times a week depending on the wind and the sun if it comes out if it's a higher temperature then they need more watering but otherwise I just leave them for once every couple of weeks. This one's up the top here this is my variegated Nixana. This one so far is the biggest Nixana I've got so I still got Nixana original mummy plant inside under the grow light but this year I am going to leave a lot of my plants or the suspect ones the one that I only have one plant say for example I'm gonna try and grow them under the grow light because they are just gonna suffer with the frost 
and I don't want them to suffer and try and recover again. My lawi over here needs watering. I'm trying to avoid watering the top because I want to save the farina, but they don't seem to be growing that fast. I've been watering the bottom and they are just slow and some of them actually died here. So the leaf propagation, so I'd say I should just, this is what I'm doing today. I need to go around and check on my plants because I haven't had a chance to check on them for a while. It looks like a lot of my plants need some attention and so I'm just going to be watering them, applying my seaweed solution. I just feel bad because I haven't got time and the good thing about not having time is that that sort of stops me from buying uh, succulents as well because I made a promise to myself that if I can't look after them anymore then I won't buy any more until I can see that <laughs> I have time to look after them because this last couple of years even though with the lockdown that we had I still didn't have enough time because uh, to look after my plants because I have to look after hubby first this one is after all I'm contemplating on putting this in a big pot because that small pot there is just not good enough. It is not getting enough watering. So this one is knucklehead. It's just so pretty, these plants. And this one's here. Look, they just recovered. So this is now a year old in my care. One year in, I think March last year is when I got these plants. And it's just slow. But from two heads of Mr. Curious here, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe another one in the bottom. So six or seven heads is not bad from two heads. And this one is Lawi, this is Lawi cross something. Oh, Linsayana, that's it. Laulinsa. So I only had one plant, now I've got two. This is actually beautiful, like sort of bluish uh, succulent. I've got some plants that died and I got a lot of plants that survived as well, but it's just part and parcel of growing things. Now this Cremneria mutabilis actually needs to be propagated again. I need to chop off all this inflorescence. So this is like a flower stalk. That's gonna flower soon. I'm not gonna wait for the flower anymore. I'm just gonna harvest all the leaves because I can get every single leaf will grow into a plant. Oh, there's so many things I need to do. This is raindrops. The raindrops drops on them. So the caranculation on the surface, they come and go. It's not stable. So I have a big pot that's got all caranculated two years ago. Now there's not a single caranculation in it or drops. Now this one so far is my biggest raindrops that has continued to grow but this year i'm gonna bring this inside as well because what i find is they take a long time to recover from the frost because our area is not suitable for growing freely or thin leaf succulents so like say the suyans the same uh manaudis uh, i've said earlier briar rose is another one that doesn't like the frost that much minus four is all it could take but then it's already bad and it takes a whole year again to recover until the next season get hit again when it's all nice and plump and then it sort of dies down again and tries to come back to life this is all i've got for you today guys because i find oh i've got <laughs> look double head hello pretty what are you yes this is bloody mary the flower stalk i already harvested it's inside and now it's formed two heads so anyway i haven't got a two-headed bloody maria yet but now i do before i go i want to show you my bluebird oh there's a bird eating the nectar over there i don't know if you can see that but it's just so gorgeous hang on i'm not sure oh look at that it's like a hummingbird oh hello you've been here yesterday and oh flew away got scared but anyway so this one is my leaf grown bluebird so they are all grown from leaf and they're still on their coconut coir they haven't graduated yet but i've got one here and maybe two that one there as well and i just noticed this one at the back here 
that one is sort of half half variegated monstrous thing and anyway they're all doing some funky things so i am going to leave them in my coconut coir and see if i get more monstros but that one definitely is a monstros bluebird and hopefully the rest will variegate because my variegated one is almost dying look at that because i kept forgetting to water it look how tiny that is now but my halbingeri variegated Oh, sorry, Lola. This is Lola. Lola here is getting bigger, but I don't know if the variegation will show up or come back. But it does look like a different Lola, different to my standard Lola. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got for you for this video and this Tinkerbell. Look how much it's grown. And look, I can't still harvest that. I'll leave it. So, so many things I have to do here. My... Uh, Joyce Talaki hasn't been watered since I put it here. I have sprayed some sulfur on my Madiva here. Two of them because they, they started to have some powdery mildew. And my mother Madiva, Madiva, Madima, my mother Madiva, I actually harvested some of the leaves in the bottom and they're now growing. But these babies, I could not get anything out of them and they still need a lot of growing. So anyway... That's all for now and also that one. There's so many things. I just want to go on and on and on but then you know how it is. I have to go and work on my garden or else I'm going to be sorry and I'm going to stop doing videos because I can't attend to my plants because first and foremost I have to look after these plants or else I wouldn't have any videos to show you. Anyway guys, that's all I've got for you and hope to see you on the next video.